The Public Speaking Project presents Using Visual Aids Effectively by Eliza Thompson and Lisa Schreiber, Ph.D. Voice talent by Nicholas Givens, with Rebecca Nyer as the audio engineer and Morgan Hartraft as the media production specialist. Two presenters, Grace and Cleo, will be giving a speech on environmental concerns. While researching the subject, both women found entertaining videos online. They decide to include these videos as visuals in order to make their speeches more engaging. When Grace presents, she plays the whole video at the end of her speech, but soon finds the group dozing off. The visual does not seem as relevant and funny as when she first watched it. After the first minute, the group begins glancing at the clock, hoping the video will be over soon. Yet the video seems to drag on and on. Cleo, on the other hand, had reviewed her video ahead of time, choosing one short, catchy, and appropriate section. When she starts off her speech with the brief clip, her audience is not only interested, but wants to hear more. This example shows what power a presentation aid can have over your audience. Presentation aids are a valuable tool when used correctly. If used incorrectly, however, an aid can ruin an otherwise fine speech. A presentation aid, more widely known as a visual aid, is described as any supplemental material added to a speech. The aid helps strengthen the spoken words. Using visuals not only makes the speech more interesting, but it also increases your credibility. In a study by McCroskey and Wright, they found that speeches with no visual aid were scored the lowest on credibility. The highest credibility rating was given to human interest visuals, or photographs. However, all visual aids gave the speech a significant boost in viewer approval. There are many different types of visual aids, ranging from PowerPoint slides to a physical demonstration. However, regardless of what type you choose, there are certain guidelines for using visual aids in a speech. These tips will help ensure your speech is a success. In this module, we won't be able to cover all the aspects of using presentation aids. However, you can find an entire chapter about presentation aids in our free textbook at www.publicspeakingproject.org. The purpose of this module is to help beginning speakers use presentation aids effectively. In this discussion, we will cover the 10 basic guidelines for properly using a presentation aid. Here is an overview of these guidelines. First, make sure the presentation aid is relevant. Second, explain the presentation aid. Third, maintain eye contact and face the audience. Fourth, ensure the audience can see the aid. Fifth, keep the presentation aid hidden until you need it. Sixth, avoid passing things through the audience. Seventh, know your technology. 8th, remember Murphy's Law. Ninth, practice with your aid. 10th, check that it's legal and safe. Now that you know what the guidelines are, we'll provide you with a little more information about each one. Before anything else, you should make sure that the presentation aid is relevant to your speech content. If it isn't, go without it. An unrelated aid will distract your audience and hinder their comprehension of the topic. Remember this is a speech first and foremost, and you don't use a visual aid just for the sake of having one. Identifying areas of your speech that are particularly complex or that you need to make sure your audience will remember. Then design a visual that is directly related to ideas you will be talking about. Presentation aids should be clear and easy to understand. However, make sure to explain the presentation aid and its connection to your speech, no matter how obvious it seems to you. Don't assume your audience will understand what your presentation aid is or means. A presentation aid can only help if the audience knows the context. Imagine if a friend showed you a graph from a distance, asked you to describe the data, but did not tell you what the axis represented. You would become lost trying to figure out the point. Be thorough in your explanation. 
It helps integrate the aid into your speech more effectively. Also, do not read directly off your visual aid. It is extremely tedious for your audience to hear what they can already read. If you have ever sat through a PowerPoint presentation read word for word, you have a good idea what this feels like. Explain the slides the same as you would any visual aid, preferably with different wording than what appears on the slides. While using an aid, remember to maintain eye contact with your audience. No matter how tempting, do not stare at the visual aid. You can glance at it if you need to point out a particular detail or check for errors, so long as you look back at your audience. Eye contact holds the listener's attention and gives you valuable feedback. Consider this example. Daniel is presenting a speech to a fairly large crowd. As his gaze moves across the room, he notices a small group that has begun to talk amongst themselves. Daniel needs to re-engage the group before they disrupt other listeners. After considering his options, Daniel walks to that side of the stage and increases the volume of his speech. The group stops chatting once he has their attention. Similarly, do not turn your back on the audience if you can help it. The visual is for them, not you. Turning away disrespects your listeners by implying that you are ignoring them. You should face your audience directly. For this reason, you may want to refrain from using chalkboards, whiteboards, or smartboards during your speech. Writing on them can disrupt a speech's flow, and more importantly, leaves you stuck with your back turned for extended periods of time. Preparing a visual ahead of time is a better solution. You also need to make sure your audience can see the aid. Avoid standing in front of it or otherwise blocking it from view. Position yourself off to one side instead. If possible, it might be wise to check the room ahead of time and find the best area to display your visual. Walk to different areas of the room to test how well it can be seen. And, be sure to check audio volume if you choose to use sound. You should continue checking these elements during your speech. Consider the following example. Sandra is presenting a speech on bicycle mechanics. To spice things up, she decides to share some different parts. While she is talking, Sandra watches the audience carefully and notices some people are straining in their seats. They seem to be having trouble seeing the visuals. In response, she picks up the pedal so it is higher. Then she moves around the stage so everyone can see. Although you want your audience to be interested, you should also strive to keep the speaking situation under control. As a speaker, you hold a certain level of authority. This means you must be careful about how you show your visuals. Visual aids should be kept somewhere safe and hidden until the moment you need them. Show them only when discussing the aid, then make them disappear. When the visuals are concealed, the audience's focus will stay on you. Otherwise, you may end up in the following situation. Hunter, a new speaker, comes up to the podium. Behind him, a large chart can be seen resting on stage. Halfway through his speech, the speaker begins to notice some of the listeners staring at the chart. What could it be? When will he get to it? The group pays so much attention to the distracting aid that they miss Hunter's key points entirely. Speakers should always avoid passing objects through the audience. Besides risking the loss or destruction of your presentation aid, this takes people's focus away from your speech. Inspecting an object has more interactive appeal than listening about it. Once the visual is in their hands, it can make the listeners lose track of what you are saying. According to Stephen Lucas, passing an aid will distract at least three people. The person who has just had it, the person who has it now, and the person waiting to get it next. In order to avoid competing with your presentation aid, try steering away from showing small objects. These would be difficult to see from a distance anyway, making it far more tempting to pass them around. If your speech must involve a small object, there are other ways to display it. Take for example a speech about jewelry making. The speaker, Aziz, uses a document camera, also known as an Elmo, to display his presentation aids. He tells his audience, Jewelry making can be difficult because it involves many small parts, beads, charms, and clasps. 
Here on the projector, I have a couple popular types of beads. The same rule applies to handouts. While printed aids can be useful, it is difficult to hold the audience's attention after distributing them. People read quicker than you can speak, so they can easily get ahead of you. Beginner speakers might want to skip making handouts or try passing them out after the speech is done. If you must use handouts during your presentation, there are a couple of things you should keep in mind. First, make sure there are enough handouts for everyone in your audience, plus a few extras. Second, distribute the handouts before your presentation begins, not during your presentation or after it. Third, at the start of your presentation, directly address how and when the handouts will be used. Here is an example. Each one of you should have received a handout about applying for a home mortgage. I know it is tempting to read ahead, but we won't be using these until about 10 a.m. If you will set them aside for now, I can explain some of the basics about the different types of mortgages so you can choose which one is right for you.